I've been asked to bring the first of our two teaching sermons from Advent. Uh, and we know that uh, we're a week early. But once again, PCP is ahead of the crowd. Uh, today, we're looking at Advent 1, uh, the theme of prophets and promises. Prophets and promises. Uh, in the Old Testament, we reveal how uh, we read how God revealed his majesty to the patriarchs, how he made the children of Israel his own special people, how he rescued them from slavery, how he led them through the wilderness, how he showed them how to worship God Almighty and how they should follow God Almighty. So they became the people who worshipped the one true God as God had directed them. And they were helped by priests and Levites and prophets and kings. God had chosen one tribe, the descendants of Levi, to be set apart to serve God and God's people by being responsible for the religious activities. I've quoted Deuteronomy here. The Lord has chosen them and their descendants out of all the tribes to stand and minister in the Lord's name always. So the descendants of Levi were to minister for the people and before God. Some descendants were priests. Others were Levites who helped in other ways. But all the tribe, all the descendants of Levi were set aside for religious service over generations. The family responsibility was to serve God and serve his people. It was something that if a father had done it, his son did it, did it and the son's sons also did it. It, it was passed through their descendants. Uh, you could say the tribe of Levi did it because of their genes. Think about that. Now, as well as Levites and priests, other people were raised up by God as prophets. They brought God's word to individual people and to the whole of the nation. Priests represented the people before God. They made it possible for the people to draw near to Almighty God. Prophets represented God to the people. They brought God's word, God's present, current, and underlined message to the people or to individuals. Prophets spoke to people as from God. And sometimes it came in simple words. Sometimes it came in a, a parable. Sometimes it was with acted out symbolism. But the true prophet always brought God's word. Thus says the Lord. This is what God says. Unfortunately, there were some people who were false prophets. They said, this is what God said, when it wasn't. They sometimes said, this is what God is saying, because they thought it would please the people who are hearing. Or they said it because they thought it would elevate them. But it wasn't the word of the Lord. But there were also schools of prophets. In the times of Israel's history, in various places, there were schools of the prophets which were training places, helping people who felt they were being called to a prophetic ministry to understand what it was and to help them know that this was God's word to people. We also know that there were the books of the prophets in the Bible, uh, starting in Isaiah and working through. There are major prophets and there are minor prophets. And there are other prophets who appear in the biblical narrative 
whose prophetic utterances are not recorded. I think of Nathan the prophet who spoke to King David. But we haven't got a book called Nathan. And there are other verses in scripture, some of them in the verses which, which the priests and, and Levites thought were significantly prophetic. We get a few verses in places in the Psalms which are prophetic verses about the coming of the Messiah. As we look through these various writings of the prophets, we we see a consistent theme. It's a thread that goes all through the Old Testament and leads on into the New Testament. It's the thread about God's promised Messiah, the anointed one. Messiah is Hebrew for anointed one. The the Greek that we use is, is Christos, Christ. So Christ and Messiah, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, means the same thing in these two different languages. I think we've got another slide coming up soon. There are many Old Testament prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. Uh, In Matthew's gospel, we see several of them because Matthew is writing to Jews and, and the Jews had a high respect for scripture. So he used some of those prophecies to explain that Jesus of Nazareth is indeed the promised Messiah. Uh, People had uh, a trust a belief, an acceptance that Old Testament scripture was authoritative. Let me take you back to the Christmas story. You remember uh, about the wise men, the magi, the people who came from the east. You, You remember how they were seeking the newborn king of the Jews. Where do you go? You go to Jerusalem. It's the capital of Israel. There they meet Herod, who's 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 the king, the boss man. But he knows nothing about a newborn king. And someone says, there's something in the scriptures about a a coming one who's to be a ruler. And so the chief priests and teachers of the law are brought in. And they go to the prophet Malachi. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you're by no means the least of the rulers of Judah, because out of you, will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. They say, yes, the coming king will be born in Bethlehem. They say that because the chief priests and the teachers of the law knew that God had promised much about the anointed one. And this coming ruler would be born in Bethlehem. To close, I want to look at Three themes about the coming one. Three promises. The first promise in our next slide is about the Messiah. The promise that the Messiah will come. We see this in several places. Jeremiah 23. I will raise up in David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely. He will do what is just and what is right. He will save Judah and Israel. And back to the prophet Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 5. As well as speaking of Bethlehem as Messiah's birthplace, he tells of the coming one's rule. He will shepherd his people. He will bring security. He will bring peace. He will bring peace to the very ends of the earth. We could all do with a bit of that messianic peace, couldn't we? And then in Isaiah chapter 9, it tells of the light coming to people who walk in darkness. There will be light because of the rule of a coming one. This rule is unending. This rule will establish a continuing kingdom. That kingdom will be characterized by justice and righteousness. And there is so much more in the Old Testament 
promises that come from God, telling of one empowered and anointed by God's Spirit who will deliver his people, who will establish his kingdom, who will rule over his people, the kingdom of God will come. And it happened. It happened. Let, let me pick up a second thing. This is about the mother. God said through the prophets something about the mother of the coming one. If you look at Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, you, you read a prophecy uh, about a virgin, a young woman, being with child, who will be called Emmanuel, God with us. A child will come that will prove God is with us. Let me explain something about Old Testament prophecy. Sometimes there is a, a twofold focus of the prophecy. Sometimes the prophecy says something for the near present, but it says something of greater significance for the future. This is typical of Old Testament prophecy. There is an immediate context, a present historic situation, and there is also a longer, fuller later perspective. Isaiah 7.14 is a case in point. Briefly, a guy called Ahaz is king of Judah and he is being threatened by foreign forces led by Rezin of Aram and Pekah of Israel and they are threatening Jerusalem. But God says to the prophet, uh, through the prophet, Ahaz don't fear. You're king of Judah, you're worried about the city and your nation, but don't fear. That threat will not materialize. Uh, and you will find that a child will be born and, and he will be called Emmanuel. And, and you'll call him Emmanuel because God is with you. You need to know God is with you. This threat that you're worried about will be defeated. Because God rules over you. Prosperity will come, not destruction. There was a context. There was an immediate context. And that immediate context was carried out. But you know there is a future and a greater context. The promise is fulfilled when Mary, a virgin, gives birth to a child created by God's Holy Spirit, who indeed is Emmanuel, because he is God with humanity. And God has come to humanity to save them, to save us, to save me and you. And let me tell you the final theme that I want to pick out in these promises that promise something about the coming one. This is about the messenger, the messenger who goes before. In the book of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 1, Malachi, the last of the Old Testament books, it speaks prophetically of one coming to prepare the way for the one who is important, more important, who is coming after him. This is the messenger, the one who is preparing the way for the one that God is sending particularly. Malachi 3 says, See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. And then suddenly, the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, whom you desire. He will come. So God promises one who will come before the Messiah to get people ready for the Messiah. And in Isaiah 40, we read more about this preparation. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley will be raised up. Every mountain and hill will be made low. 
rough ground shall become level, rugged places will be made a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. Those words are typical of, of the activities before a king, a ruler, came to visit a town. They made sure that the pathways were ready for the coming ruler to visit. And Isaiah says there will be one in the desert who prepares people for the coming one. Sorry, can we go back a bit? If you go to the opening verses of Mark's Gospel, there's a wonderful, wonderful statement in chapter 1. He starts his Gospel like this. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Verse 2 of chapter 1. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight paths for him. Verses 2 and 3, that was. Verse 4, so John came. The quote from Isaiah about the one who is a messenger who comes to prepare. And verse 4, and so John came. Mark says, John's coming is a direct fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. And he did just that. He got people ready. He told them to repent of their sin. He told them to be baptized. The significance of that is that it's a baptism of repentance. When Gentiles decided that instead of worshipping other gods, they would worship the one true God of Israel. And when Gentiles, non-Jews, decided that they wanted to follow the God of Israel and, and, and to be dedicated to him, Gentiles were baptized to show that they were becoming real Jews. And what John the Baptist is saying is, repent from your sin and be baptized. So become real Jews. This is nothing to do with Christian baptism, which is symbolic of the old life dying and a new life rising. This is a baptism of repentance, which is symbolic of the people of Israel who have not been serious about God. They have not followed God as they should. They have not dedicated their lives to him. Well, now is the time to repent of your sin, to get serious with God, because Messiah is coming. And we've got to make sure that we, the people of God, are ready for all that God wants to do through the Messiah. Repent and show your repentance by doing what Gentiles do. When they get serious with the God of Israel, they're baptized. A baptism of repentance. I'm telling you folks, says John the Baptist, you need to repent of your sin and you need to get serious with God. The messenger came and he prepared the way for the Messiah. Another promise from God. We at PCP think God's word is true and trustworthy. And we at PCP over Advent should make things easy for God to come to us afresh. Advent is about preparing for the great celebration of Christ's birth, the coming of the Messiah. God's promises are recorded to guide us, to help us walk in God's ways, to help us do as God wants. And as we together get ready for the coming, the celebration over the coming of Christ at Christmas, it's good for us to prepare for that through Advent, 
So I've summarized some stuff on Advent for me and for you and for us as a church. And really what I feel is that we don't want to get dragged into what is not Christ Mass in our society. It's a sort of winter Mass. It's a sort of party Mass. It's a sort of commercial Mass. But we should be preparing for Christ Mass. And how do we do that? Just to focus on Christ, on the Messiah, on Jesus, on all that he did to do, uh, came to do, so that we might know something more of God's love and God's purposes in our lives and follow it. What do I recommend? Try and spend some more time reading the scriptures. It's God's word to us. Ponder the promises that we read here about the coming Messiah, the coming Christ. Choose to be more fully part of God's plans and ways for you. And really focus on moving closer to God. Because I tell you this, Christmas joy, real Christmas joy, doesn't come from what's inside of the present that you've been given. The excitement about ripping open the paper it is not what it's all about. It doesn't come from what's inside your present. Real Christmas joy comes from what's inside you. And God puts the life of his spirit inside us when we turn to Christ and when we seek the grace and forgiveness that Jesus offers through his cross. We sing, O come, O come, Emmanuel. And we need more of Emmanuel, God with us, here. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel, we sing. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Jesus, live as our saviour and live as our Lord in us and lead us by your spirit to live for you better and to serve you better. Is that a good thought for Advent? Is that something you could pray? Lord Jesus, live in us as our saviour and as our Lord and help us by your spirit to be part of the people who build your kingdom in this place. Amen.